There's been a lot of hype surrounding Escape from Tarkov Arena. Gamers want a less punishing way to get into the Tarkov gunplay and learn the mechanics. Unfortunately, the execution of this mode is extremely janky, to no one's surprise, and while that Tarkov jankiness is part of the charm for the extraction experience, in a tight-knit competitive mode, it can be pretty frustrating. Today, I want to give you my first impressions of Tarkov Arena. Now there's a lot to cover here and I wasn't really sure where to begin, so I figured I'd start with the good and then we can sort of work our way down to the bad. So Tarkov Arena is primarily a 5v5 tactical shooter that has high skill weapon mechanics and a deep emphasis on audio and strategic positioning. Not many shooters have tried to bring this level of realism and authenticity into a quick match type environment, so in that way, the game stands out from the crowd. The foundations are all based on years of Tarkov gameplay additions and refinements, so it honestly has a lot to work with, and the depth of, say, classes and weapon mechanics is a major component that I can see being utilized in lots of fun strategic ways. I also like that there's sort of a theme or story behind the game. There's an announcer and even large spectator spaces around many of the maps. You can spectate from up here in the 2v2 mode between matches. It's kind of neat that they thought about it actually existing within, say, the Tarkov universe, though the depth of this narrative does seem a little bit shallow. Like, you don't really get a backstory when loading up the game or anything like that, but it's more than just throwing people into a random place and saying fight without any context at all. Now beyond that, the game is in a pretty rough state, which is embarrassing considering just how few innovations Arena brings beyond what Tarkov already established and how obvious some of the poor design choices are. Now before I get into those details, first I have a quick word from today's sponsor. The holidays are upon us and things are getting crazy. This is always, without fail, the busiest time of year for me, and cooking healthy meals is often something that gets pushed way down my to-do list. Luckily, I don't have to spend lots of time cooking with Factor's never-frozen, calorie-conscious meals that are shipped right to my door. All I have to do is pop Factor meals into the microwave and they're ready to serve in two minutes. They're always delicious, well-portioned, and I never have to worry about finding ingredients or cleaning up. Also, my kids love them, which is the real test of if something tastes good or not. Factor has over 35 weekly options for me to choose from that are all healthy and packed with flavor. They even cover a wide range of dietary needs like keto, vegetarian, calorie smart, which I definitely appreciate. And they let you try the service with a massive discount for your first order. So try Factor today. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code LEVELCAP50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com or click the link below and use code LEVELCAP50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. All right, now getting into what does not work in Tarkov Arena. The biggest one is the progression and loadout system. It seems to be copying War Thunder or World of Tanks approach to having different tiers of operators to pick from. As you play a specific line of classes, you will rank them up further until you can unlock the next tier. These tiers get significantly better as you rank up, giving you better guns, optics, ammo, armor, grenades, etc. However, and this is a massive however, like it makes me not want to play it, matchmaking, at least at the moment, doesn't seem to care what level operators you're matched against. I mean, I think everybody here looks like they have way better kit than me. <laughs> what gives it away? Is it the, the armor? The armor, the cool guns, the helmets. You're out wild, wild west in our here. Or if you play with a friend who is a higher level, it seems like it might just throw you into a high level match where you're going to get absolutely curb stomped by better weapons and gear until you're begging for the uninstall button. You can go into a match with Ikea armor, barely any meds, and a pea shooter against somebody with a 100 round M4 laser sights and max level armor. And in fact, many of the matches I played were against players who had weapons and armor that were probably like 20 to 30 hours away from me being able to get them. Many firefights felt like jokes, shooting into somebody's back only to have them turn around and spray me down in a few shots. Fuck me, dude. Come on. 
I had deaths where I landed 14 shots on my enemy before they killed me. So if you're used to having any semblance of a fair fight in your first person shooter games, Tarkov Arena will drive you crazy until you can unlock the higher tier guys. This can be fixed and I hope the devs plan to have a tier based matchmaking system or that it just wasn't working at the state I was in because of the limited number of players or something like that. But honestly, it doesn't seem to be even set up for that with you picking your operator after the match queuing process. So you already get matched against whatever players and then everybody picks their operator. So if you say run out of funds to buy your operator at a high tier of play, you might have to go in with the weakest operator who just isn't going to even have a chance against high level ones. So from the foundational matchmaking design, it doesn't even seem like there's a plan to balance out the gameplay in this regard. Now the skill system, familiar to those who have already played Escape from Tarkov, which you can rank up further and boost your stats is only going to exacerbate this already wildly imbalanced system. Especially if it ties into your Escape from Tarkov character, which it's supposed to do, but I don't think that's quite set up yet. High level players will come from Escape from Tarkov with massive health and weapon handling benefits over other players. Now I was playing some rounds with a friend who is a high skill Tarkov player who has around 7,000 hours in the game and he said his KDR was 0.2 in arena while grinding through the trash ranks. That means for every kill he got, he died five times. That's a top tier player having to just get blasted over and over and over for hours until ranking up to better gear. And once he got that better gear, he was then top of the scoreboard. This is pretty much the exact opposite experience that you want if you're trying to introduce new players to Tarkov. The matching system simply has to change for this to have any chance of success, or a complete overhaul of ammo and armor to at least give basic kits a fighting chance. It would be like playing War Thunder, but if the tiers of planes and tanks didn't matter and you just ended up in a biplane fighting against MiG-29s or something crazy. Now, the other major problem is that there's no tutorial system, which I mean, how many TDM style shooters really need a tutorial? Well, Tarkov needs a freaking tutorial, especially if this mode is designed to be an onboarding experience for new players. With the 1000 keybinds weird crap like control being a modifier key so rebinding it is a huge pain in the butt and running is super janky until you know how to like actually change some of it in the settings. Certain armor types mitigate just about all the damage from small caliber weapons. The different body damage states from Tarkov have carried over into arena and you need different meds to heal them and there's no explanation as to what to use and when. Also the medical system feels very out of place in this mode considering just how small and fast the maps are. You don't often have time to heal mid firefight. So many Tarkov mechanics that might feel right at home in the bigger, slower, more methodical shooters simply don't translate well into Call of Duty sized arenas. Especially with the amount of hip firing and lack of crosshairs, the firefights feel very RNG in close quarters. In my opinion, it actually highlights some of the shortcomings of Tarkov in the extreme close quarter battles compared to the more arcadey shooters, which will just give you the hip fire cross air because it's kind of needed. There's also a 2v2 style tournament mode which could be cool but it suffers from tons of downtime between matches while you just stand around waiting for other teams to finish their fights. The finals, another competitive shooter, was just released that shows you how to handle a tournament style system like this, reducing downtime between matches by having multiple games happening simultaneously. Tarkov needs that system for the 2v2 mode to have any chance of success in my opinion. Now those are kind of the bigger design issues with the game, but it's also loaded with tons of little things that are likely to drive you crazy. Every match you have to swap your fire selector into full auto if you have a full auto capable weapon. If you forget to do this, you're basically going to die in your first engagement. Maybe some people like this for the realism's sake, but it drove me a little nutty. You may as well just put your weapon in the safety mode as that's probably what it would be like in real life if you want that sim experience. Now, when you join a match and pick your operator, you basically are married to that loadout for the entirety of the rest of the rounds, which there could be nine rounds total. There's no mid-match swapping. It sucks a lot of the variety out of the gameplay, and if you're not liking your kit, you just gotta stick with it. The queuing system for these matches is unnecessarily cumbersome, and AFK players can prevent you from starting the match. It makes no sense at all. It can take five minutes just to get into a game, which is an eternal and kind of defeats the whole point of it being a quick match system. Most battle royales queue faster than this. 
Colored armbands on your player model are the only identifier of friend from foe, and there is almost no UI in the game, so friendly fire goes a bit crazy, as you might imagine. Also, it's only red and blue armbands for the 5v5, yet it switches your colors between games. Even though they could easily just make you always blue, like pretty much all other multiplayer games do. Instead, you have to remember if you're blue or red, which is constantly changing, and friendly fire incidents go through the roof. Now, the lack of UI, which is cool for immersion, is a little bit silly when it comes to things like people spawning with frag grenades that can one-shot you. People can throw them across the map and get kills on you as you're running out of spawn. It just seems like there's going to be a lot of weird exploits due to the lack of UI and insanely punishing mechanics. Now, the map layouts are quite chaotic, which, in my opinion, does detract from some of the more strategic gameplay. They aren't the worst maps, but there is an art form to doing a clean 5v5 map and Tarkov hasn't quite figured it out. There's a lot of weird sight lines and lanes that kind of fall apart into non-lanes. They often become a bit messy with tons of overlapping sight lines which just adds to the knowledge curve of the game and in my opinion it's not really necessary to have the maps be this complex. I think you could still get a lot of the fun gameplay without all of the overlapping sight lines. Now the visuals of Tarkov Arena are not impressive if you compare to a lot of games that are launching or in early access now. They're basically the same old Tarkov visuals, so they're competent, but ultimately they suffer a lot from the post-processing syndrome. The base game lighting and materials just aren't good enough to compete with modern Unreal Engine 5 games that are dropping, so they just post-process the crap out of the visuals with bloom and chromatic aberration in the hopes that you might not notice, and well, it kind of works, but it also as to the overall janky presentation. Now, as you might tell from this video, I'm not overly fond of Tarkov Arena right now, but I really do want it to be a good game. My main problem with it is that I do like games that offer challenging, interesting gunplay and tactics, but I also want them to be a fair experience. And anything that's a tight-knit 5v5 mode needs a lot more refinement than Battlestate has given it. Like, a whole lot more. And with all my criticisms sort of laid out, let me try and put a more positive spin on things as it might not be all doom and gloom. Battlestate Games has made the extraction shooter that more or less started the worldwide craze. Escape from Tarkov is hardcore, janky, overly punishing, and for some reason, people absolutely love it. But the game didn't launch in a good state. It was so poorly balanced, buggy, and rough around the edges. Frankly, it still is in many ways, but it did get a lot better over the years and has delivered hours and hours of fun for fans. Tarkov Arena may follow a similar development path. Extremely problematic at launch with a potential path towards something more enjoyable. Thanks to the years of refinement of Tarkov's gunplay system, this game has the potential for the same depth and nuance in many regards. There's a lot to work with here, and I think it could become a fun complement to the standard Tarkov experience. That said, I don't know how many people this arena game is going to attract into the greater Escape from Tarkov game, and I don't see many people wanting to play it as a standalone experience, especially one with its own price tag. Maybe I'm wrong on that one, but it's quite hard to judge the future potential of this game as the work needed seems quite obvious, and seeing it launch in at least the beta early access form with significant design flaws is concerning. Tarkov Arena, in my opinion, requires a much more gamified approach compared to Escape from Tarkov, which conversely benefits from the raw, ruthless design. I'm not sure the devs have what it takes to really refine this experience, but I'll certainly keep my eyes on it. If you're on the fence about getting into Tarkov Arena, I'd say hold off for now unless you really, really like punishment. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, consider subscribing, and hit that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. And if you want to see another example of a Tarkov-like game with some cool innovations, check out my Beautiful Light video next. This is the horror version of Tarkov, and honestly, it's awesome. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.